I walked in the room, I looked down and, you know, right next to our bed and, you know, leaning against the presence, you know, I saw the shotgun between his legs and then I saw what was left of his face and my, you know, I'm, I'm trying to rationalize this in my mind that because there is no, there's nothing that can prepare you for that. And I thought, you know, he was always humorous and a kidder, and I thought, oh, he's, he's just, this is his sick way of, of a joke. You know, that he, he put this makeup on or put a mask on and, and wants me to, you know, think that he did this. And so, yeah, I'm sure it was probably like 10, 15 seconds, and, and, I'm, and I just, I hard, couldn't hardly breathe, you know. And then I went back out to the living room and realized my cell phone's dead. So I instantly, you know, I, I started almost hyperventilating. So I plugged my phone in and, you know, it takes like 30 seconds to turn on and then it has to have enough charge to, you know, so... Are you screaming? It, Are you crying? No, Are I was just in shock. Are you quiet? in shock. I was, um, I was pretty much, you know, shaking like this, like I, like I had the chills. So I sat there, you know, by, by our computer and waited for my phone to charge and I, I dialed 911 longest 30 seconds of your life. Oh, it felt like that. half an hour. It felt like forever. And, you know, so I, I called 911 and um, the dispatcher, um, you know, she, she said, what's your emergency? I said, I said my, my husband shot himself. He's dead. So when the officer came in, he said, is there anyone else at home? And, and I said, you know, my, my girls are in the car. And so he had another officer come up and, and sit with them. Um, and then the EMTs had given them, you know, some little stuffed animals. And What did they think was going on at that point? They, they, knew, they thought that, you know, Dad was sick. Um, I think that's kind of what, what, I don't think the first responders said, your dad's sick. I just think that... Um, they said they're, you know, they're in there doing what they can. They're checking on your dad. So I think it, in their mind, mm -hmm. they were piecing their own story together. At what point did you tell the girls that their dad had died? Um, I waited until the next day, and then I did call third level um, to find out what I should be telling my kids. What you is know, third level? Third level crisis center in Traverse City. Um, crisis center. I mean, it's just that, it, whether you're suicidal or going through something that you don't think you can handle or, you know, questions. I, I asked them, I said, what, what do I tell my kids? And um, they gave me options, which was nice. Um, you know, they, they weren't, they didn't, you know, jump in and say, oh, you know, don't, don't tell them, you know, that he committed suicide. Don't, don't do that. Um, but I did. I, the next morning, my dad was there too, and I had the girls sit on my lap and I said, you know, um, dad's not in the hospital, he's not sick, um, you know, dad, dad passed away, he died. And it, it took a minute, you know, for them to even understand the words I was saying. Um, did you tell them then, died or did you tell them passed away? I said both. Because okay. I, I wanted them, you know, I didn't know what, which term they would understand. Did they react um, differently to either term? No, no, I, I think they, the one they seemed to grasp the most though, um, like later on when, when they said, um, oh, you know, and they had questions maybe five minutes, like, so dad died? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and what do you, where do you go from there? You know, they, well, what happened? And to this, I, I don't know what I told them, that they knew a gun was involved. I don't remember how they found out, and for about two months I let them believe that it was um, an accident while he was cleaning it. I never corrected them. That was just something that they had put together in their own minds. Mm -hmm. um, and then after we had gone to, um, we had started going to counseling at hospice, and then um, I had started going to my own, you know, therapist. And both of them suggested that, you know, I, I, I tell them, um, you know, correct, correct their thinking if I was comfortable telling them that it was a suicide. And I, I felt that it was, 
better that they know now and because it, again it's a small community the last thing I wanted was for somebody to you know be callous and, and say something in front of them mm -hmm. and them not not be prepared for that I I knew because of their ages I had to be careful about you know explaining it um, I can't just say dad was sad because then they're automatically going to think everybody that's sad is going to do this and so I, I told him, I said, you know, Dad was sad, he was upset, and there was, um, I said, you know, there's, there's people that, um, that are sick that don't go to the hospital. I said, well, Dad was sick, and he didn't, he didn't go to somebody that could help him work on the sickness that was in his mind, in his brain. And um, since he didn't get that sickness fixed, this is what happened. And they, they seemed to understand that, you know, to a point. Did it bother them more, or did it seem to have any sort of effect on them that they found out that it was he had taken his own life rather than it I was just an accident? I don't think so. It, it didn't. Um, it didn't really hit for probably another over a year mm -hmm. until they, you know, whether they were doing their own, you know, digging, at, you know, on the internet or, or whatever, um, or asking questions in therapy sessions and. I think then it start it did start to bother my older daughter. You know, why did Dad have to do that? You know, she she was starting to comprehend that you know he had killed himself, that there was nothing else that that killed him.